invitare Alan Lang. Alan Lang è il padrone di casa, il capo di Avaya eh, Europa e non è un ingegnere, è un avvocato e questa la dice lunga sul fatto che eh, a volte la tecnologia può essere maneggiata anche e forse con originalità da radici umanistiche. Eh, la cosa però che mi fa piacere dire Alan è che eh, la, crisi, eh, la crisi è un qualcosa a cui noi dobbiamo guardare con una cultura with the three O, optimism, optimism and optimism. So I ask you to give your point of view on the situation of, of Europe, your point of view if you want on Italy and our national industry. And let me say that we are expect, expecting from you a point of view on this scenario, the way in which we may manage the crisis and how we may see behind this crisis. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you and buongiorno. Uh, benvenuti a tutti. You'll be very glad to hear. I apologize, that's the end of my Italian. I am going to have to uh, revert to my Scottish English. Um, I can assure you, if you buy me dinner in a nice Italian restaurant, my Italian is much better. Uh, but uh, I apologize that uh, I have to make my, my comments in, in, in English. Uh, firstly, thank you, Raffaele, for uh, once again organizing a fantastic event. Uh, we in Avaya are very proud of this event. Um, it is by far the largest attended event we have across Europe, and I thank you for your attendance and continued support. Uh, Raffaele and his team have put together a wonderful uh, agenda with a lot of speakers. The good news is the agenda gets better uh, after I finish, so I will talk only very briefly for 10 minutes about how we see the crisi, so I knew one more word in Italian, um, and how it's interesting to me as I go around Europe how different countries are adapting to a recession, crisis, call it what you will, and the trends that we are seeing uh, across our business but also across the industry. And I think it's very important that we all realize that this is a stepping off point and that from here things get better. And we have some data points, which I think uh, will be shared by uh, Giancarlo later, about how we see the trends emerging across Europe and what to look out for. And I think it's more than just uh, adapting to a crisis. It's about adapting to a changing world and a changing environment. And if there's one thing I think it's important uh, in the middle of this is that we have to adapt to the changing environment and make our choices and pick a strategy that works for our organizations that would give us the best point to go forward with. Let me, let me step back a little bit and say a couple of words about uh, how I see that. I mentioned to you that I am Scottish. Um, it's a very exciting time in my home country because we will shortly be making a choice as to whether we want to continue in an alliance with our next door neighbors. And one thing in life, I can tell you, you can pick your friends, but you cannot choose your neighbors. And by that I mean, I hope it translates, that uh, in Scotland we've lived next to the English for hundreds of years. And I have to point back, as I'm in Italy today, to some of the things that uh, make us humble, and I think that's one word I'll come back to as we look at the crisis, it's taught us all humility. And in Scotland, uh, those of you who are from a Roman background, many of you are obviously, hundreds of years ago, you came north to the very north of England and you built a wall. That was your strategy. You built Hadrian's Wall. Um, I don't know, I assume you all recall your ancestors building Hadrian's Wall. And that had two effects. That strategy led to two things. One, it kept us, the Scots, on our side. And the second thing is, it allowed you to keep the English on the other side. And that had a double benefit. Firstly, you could control the English. And secondly, we could do what we want because we're not bothered by our neighbor anymore. So I have, from the deepest of my heart, Great thanks to Italy for uh, making that happen. 
However, it also taught us humility. And I stand in front of you today as one of the leaders of Avaya in a very humble position because at the weekend, for those of you who are rugby fans, Scotland come to Rome every second year and get a dose of humility because every time we come to Rome, we let you win. <laughs> and I think we are the only country you ever beat. I think you beat France once, but the rest of the time, it's down to us. And that is our thank you to you for keeping the English on the other side of the wall. <laughs> so we will continue to let you win, but then you must help us with the other side. So let me uh, move on a little bit and talk about the challenges we see it uh, for, for, for our business. And I think the one thing is that we're all in it and we're all looking at the same things. We're in the crisis. Most organizations have moved beyond that. And the thing that I talk to lots of CIOs about across Europe is expense to revenue ratios. Everybody is very focused on their expense line as the first item that they look at to try and come out of the crisis. But we all go through this trajectory of crisis, moving to leadership, and deciding how to begin to adapt our businesses to take up the challenge ahead of us. We then adapt to projects. We then try and make those projects come together in a homogeneous way so that our businesses can go forward uh, in a way that we're managing the business as opposed to managing the bottom line. And those companies who adapt to this fastest and strongest come out as the winners because they become the benchmark. They become the ones that are able to grow the revenue line faster than, uh, than, the, 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 than the, the, their competitors. I'm not an economist. I'm a humble lawyer by background. And I will leave it to our uh, economic experts to go further into it. But it's a trend that we all see. And what would we all like our businesses to be in the next three to five years? And I think it's an important point that we look not only at adapting to the crisis, but we look at the trends in the marketplace. And I've gathered here some data points as we look at wanting to develop our businesses to become faster, to become smarter, to become more competitive, to win market share, and, and become cost efficient. We need to look at what's happening both to the consumer and to our employees, because it becomes the same thing. And I think the data points and I'm not going to spend too much time on them. But look at it. 40% of employees spend more than 20% uh, you know, of their time from their desk. That means it's a changed environment. People are now working differently. 72% of organizations, according to Gartner, so these are not uh, Avaya statistics, are permitting their employees' owned devices to become part of their infrastructure. And I think that is by far the most significant. The number of CIOs I've talked to who have said, I am fed up trying to get my people away from their iPad or their iPhone. We are not giving them those tools. It's an expensive tool to give them. But we will enable our infrastructure to fully utilize that capability. And that, to me, is a reality point of how organizations have to adapt to what is going to happen anyway. That leads, of course, to 40% growth in wireless LAN, 80% of Fortune companies, the Fortune 100 companies are deploying iPads and iPhones anyway. And 72% are planning to include smartphones into their video conferencing capability. All very relevant statistics in a crisis that we have to manage anyway. So this adds complexity, but I would argue also adds an opportunity for us to take advantage of that and to build that into our infrastructure and into our planning so that we become more cost efficient, because we become more effective. We are happier employees, and we can reduce our internal costs, because we've created an environment where people don't need to be desk bound, and can be mobile, and can be out in the marketplace. So I hope those data points uh, have some resonance for you. And uh, when Giancarlo talks later, maybe those points will have some relevance to how, how you see things in the Italian market. Th those uh, data points, I think, have being responded to in different ways in different countries. I spend a lot of time in Ireland. Ireland has been in deep crisis for much longer than Italy has. They were one of the first to, uh, countries to have to respond to a changed economic environment with a crash. In Ireland, this has become the mantra 
for almost every large enterprise and public sector as they try and adapt their businesses and get to the forefront and become a leading country as opposed to a reacting country to what they see in the crisis. So what is our proposition together? This is not an Avaya proposition. This is, I think, something that is across the, the industry. The role of the chief information officer is changing fundamentally. We have had a lot of CFO, and I apologize to CFOs in the audience, engagement in the whole evolution of collaboration, of technology, of our infrastructure. That time, I think, is passing very quickly. And in the most flexible and adaptive and agile, and I'll keep coming back to the word agile, companies, the CIO is now seen as the chief innovation officer because companies have found that through innovation, through a process of getting from where they are today and maximizing the ability of their people to be effective in the marketplace, innovation will get them beyond the crisis. And that feedback comes from, from, from IDC who have a 67% response rate, which is pretty high. So it's a journey. And to go on that journey, I think we in Avaya see three steps in that journey. Firstly, you have to consolidate your infrastructure, what you have today, what you're going to have as the platform upon which you will build your business for tomorrow. You have to integrate new business models into your infrastructure in order to be able to adapt to the competitive marketplace. And then lastly, but I think most importantly, innovate is the way we're all going to step out of this and become much more competitive in Europe, in Italy, in any of the large economies across Europe. Innovation, which you know, has got a price tag attached to it, is something that I think can be cost effectively deployed if done in the right way. So let me just very quickly talk about that, that journey. And I'm not going to go into each of these, uh, these, these bullet points. But the consolidation phase, as we see it, is about the cost phasing stage. That's where the initial cost savings are going to take place around server virtualization, business continuity, messaging consolidation, reduced maintenance costs, bringing in-house conferencing. All of the measures that you may be considering in your business today has a significant impact on the bottom line because it's hard dollars. And unfortunately, you have to go through that consolidation phase before you can get to the next phase, which is when you start to see business benefit. But I would say, in most of the organizations we talk to today, they are 60 to 70% through this phase of their redefining their business model. Next, the integration phase also shows significant cost savings, but also leads to greater business efficiency. And in each of these areas, you're looking at projects that are going on, which are not necessarily linked to the entire business strategy, but it's part of a single initiative working in each department to bring around greater integration of the technology environment and where you're beginning to look at flexible mobile working. Remember the statistic I gave you earlier. You're looking at centralization of IVR applications. You're beginning to migrate to the cloud. And the cloud is something that John Luca and so, uh, we'll talk about later. We in Avaya believe that the uh, realization of the cloud will be a significant factor in helping all of us move beyond the crisis and into the next phase, which should be exciting for all of us. And then the final phase is about innovation. And that's the piece that I think is, for us in our industry, part of what we have to go back to. To adapt to innovation, to embrace innovation, and make it reality in our businesses, whilst at the same time allowing the new business models that people want to work with to become reality. Home working, flexible working, uh, you know, bringing in workers who may work at home and are not full-time employees, but enabling them to become knowledge workers and use their skills and experience in a much more effective way. In Europe, and I see this time and again, and Avaya is a company that in the last two to three years has been highly acquisitive. Uh, you all probably know we bought Nortel and we've made a number of other acquisitions. We made an acquisition only last week. The challenge in Europe is always about how you bring people into an organization, 
how you can cost effectively continue to evolve that business with huge employee costs and huge issues around restructuring the business. And I know for a fact that you know, American companies now look very carefully at the investment they're making in people, particularly in Europe where the laws are much tougher than anywhere else, and how do they therefore get to adapt to the new business model whilst at the same time carrying a huge number of, of, of workers who have come in through, through acquisition. And the flexibility that we need to offer those people and to give them a way of working in the future is a very significant factor. So looking at innovation, data center virtualization, and improving key business processes. And if there's one message I can give you when I talk about Avaya is we now talk about business improvement processes as part of business collaboration. That is the key message that Avaya brings with what we're currently offering. We introduced, I think in the last, uh, my colleague Stacy here will help me, in the last 18 months, something like 70 new products into the marketplace. That's a huge amount of innovation. Can you, our partners and customers, absorb innovation at that level and at that speed? And that's what we believe we need to help you with, not because we only want to sell you more things, but because we believe that the innovation we're bringing helps you adapt your business model so that your business collaboration, which will give you competitive advantage, can be materialized in a short time frame and help you adapt to the crisis and grow out of it. So we see for the enterprise a number of things are happening. Industry directions are all about BYOD, a horrible English term, bring your own device. All of our business collaboration models are built around that uh, possibility. Social networking, we all know the damage that that can do. We also know the benefit it can bring. But we have built our platform, and we know our competitors have, and we know you are looking at it in your business. How do you embrace social networking as part of your business model to make you more competitive, to make you more agile, and to make you uh, able to respond and gain market share much more effectively? And finally, obviously, the cloud issue is one that uh, we will come back to, we will come back and talk about later. Okay, finally, I think I'm being pulled off here. Um, let me just, a couple of words about what we think we bring uh, to, to the whole issue of business collaboration. Everybody wants to be able to deploy applications in a cost efficient and effective way. And our platform is built around context-aware applications. That's what the consumer wants. That's what you want to be, offer, be able to offer your partners and your customers. And you need to, at the same time, to integrate with business and social applications in a cost-effective and flexible way. And that's what I think cost-effectiveness, flexibility, agility, and the ability to adapt to the new market dynamics are going to be the ways that you step out of the current crisis and become a more competitive industry and become more comp competitive organizations. I talk to a lot of governments across Europe and you know, government, I think, has looked at ICT or IT as a huge opportunity for their citizens. How many governments have actually made it reality how many government projects have ended up going badly wrong because they have not been deployed effectively? How many government employees are as effective as they could be in bringing forward the services they need to, to, the, to, to, to their, their citizens? And time and again, we get into a discussion that the ICT industry has failed to deliver that to government in a way that is acceptable to the citizen. Why is that any different from a commercial enterprise? because commercial enterprises have taken advantage of that and have had some success. Commercial enterprises are facing the crisis big time, but will be able to adapt to this much more quickly if they're able to adapt to flexible systems and to be able to deploy new technologies in a way that makes their employees and their partners more effective in the market. And it's the same for government. And I talk to a lot of government departments now who are thinking very seriously about changing the whole style of management 
of ICT projects in a way that they can use this effectively. They have more satisfied employees, civil servants are using the same technologies. They have more satisfied citizens. We have healthcare systems that really bring business benefit. And I think that through all of the crisis, we need to look at this as the stepping off point to adapt our businesses to be able to be more effective and therefore take advantage. And I really would argue to you that this is an exciting point. It's not a negative point, but we need to embrace it and adapt to it uh, effectively. So in a very quick, short period of time, I hope those are some interesting comments. I'm very happy to uh, try and, uh, and take questions later. Um, we are very excited about the event. Again, I thank you for your attendance. I thank you for your support. And uh, I also thank you for helping with my ugly neighbors south of Adrian's Wall. Thank you. Grazie, Alan Lang.